And so we thank God for allowing us to be in his number one more time. We thank God for allowing us to have another service. And we give God praise. We give him glory. We give him honor. We wanted to welcome all of you that are watching live. Facebook, Instagram. We want to welcome you to New Life Tabernacle. This is the church that God has put in this city to be able to hear the word of the Lord. I know you're tired of hearing many preachers preach certain things, but they don't live it. I know you're tired of hearing messages talking about blessings, but that's all. And all of the false prophets and preachers that are in the city and come to the city to rob you of your money, your tithe and offering is what they call it, but they're robbing you and they don't give you what it, the Bible is saying that we are to live by according to what is written. So I say to you, get out of that church and come on into truth. Come on to new life so that your soul can be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we welcome you here. We don't have any problems with anyone, but only problems that we have is when you want to try to say you're a preacher or a saint of God, but you're not living according to what is written. Amen. And so we say to you, come on, stop playing church, but why don't you become the church and be a part of the church of the living God? And so we give God praise and glory and honor for allowing us to be here. We're not going to be here long. We know that it is raining and we want to get you out of here safely. And we understand there's a curfew that's going on in Cluiston. Not in Bell Glade, not in Pahokee, not in South Bay, but in Cluiston. And so we're praying that God's will will still continue to be done. We understand that all of the things that's happening in the world today regarding what took place with George Floyd. But I come to tell you, saints, I do I'm a confirmer that I believe that what was done to him was wrong. As I said to many other, those minorities that has happened regarding police brutality, it's all wrong. But the way that we're handling and most people are handling and going out to West Palm Beach and all over the place, many of them not doing this for the cause, but they're doing it because they want to vandalize and loot, they want to steal, and that is not what I believe that George Floyd would have wanted to happen. But if we're going to stand for something, let's stand for that which is right, and let's not cause our cities to be torn apart in Jesus' name. As I say, here in the Glickin area, we are a smaller city compared to the others. And so if we tear up our city, then what does that leave us, people of God? We will find ourselves without anything if we tear up what we little that we do have. So I say to you, let's be about the cause, but understand it does not take violence and looting and rioting as what we're seeing happening in Jesus' name. And so I have a message tonight that the Lord has given me to give to the saints and to those that are watching, to every sinner, backslider, every lukewarm saint, and every saint of God that is on fire for the living God. We're going to be looking at the word of the Lord in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, one verse. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. I thank God for my leadership. I have a pastor. I have a leadership that is over me. I don't just do what I want to do, but I have to answer to someone that's over me. And this is how every saint of God should be. Whenever you hear somebody say, I don't have a pastor, Jesus is my pastor, then you run away from them. Because God has always given men of God and preachers, women of God in our lives, that will give us direction and guidance. God said in the book of Jeremiah 3.15 that he will give pastors out of his own heart or from his own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Moses was a pastor. Joshua was a person that led people. He had prophets and the apostles. So how can we say today we don't need any type of leadership over us? So 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. This is Paul writing to his son in the gospel, Timothy, because Timothy was a bishop and he was a leader over the churches. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19, the Bible reads, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Let me say that again. Having 
copy this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Depart from sin. Depart from the things that are wrong. Depart from rioting. Depart from the evil and the wickedness that are that is before us. Nevertheless, the foundation of God's heaven sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are here. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The lesson tonight are these simple three words. Having this seal. Having this seal. This is the lesson tonight. Having this seal. If I can do a subtitle, it would say, which seal do you have? Which seal do you have? So let us pray. Let us receive this to all of the Glade area. If you can hear me and if you're watching, don't just look at the preacher, but listen to what God is saying. I pray that his heart and your heart will be open to the word of God where you will hear truth. Not a lot of yelling, even though that I might do that, but understand, I want you to hear what thus said the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, your loving kindness. Thank you for everything that you've done. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I pray that your will be done. Touch the water, Lord God. Trouble the waters of baptism. Fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. Help us to understand this message. Help us to have clarity, revelation. I pray that everyone is watching live that they don't delete or they don't turn it off. This is something that we all need to hear. I pray that those that are here in this parking lot, that their ears will be open. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. To every sinner and every backslider, pay attention. Every lukewarm saint, pay attention. And every seven saint of God that's plugged in, pay attention to what God is saying in these last and evil days. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say, Amen. 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 Clap your hands up to God. Somebody say, Thank you, Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and say, Hallelujah. Somebody blow your horn. If you are going to receive this message in Jesus' name, Hallelujah. In our scripture text, we read how. Our very own Apostle Paul is speaking to his son in the gospel, Timothy, about having a seal. Having a seal. That is S-E-A-L. Having a seal. The question is, what is a seal? Or what is the definition of a seal? If you don't know, I want to explain it so that you can understand this message more clearly. What is a seal? What is Paul talking about? What is the definition of a seal that Paul is talking to Timothy about? It is a device or a substance that is used to join two things together. Two things together or a substance to prevent them from coming apart or to prevent anything from passing between them. It is regarded as a confirmation or a guarantee of something, a stamp, a mark, a sign of approval. If I can say one more thing, it means you are certified. When you get the seal that Paul is talking about, when it comes to spirituality or your connection with God, it means that you have a stamp or a mark or a sign of approval or you are certified. It means that nothing should be able to come between you and God. Nothing should be able to come between you and your creator, your God, your Lord, your master. You have been certified. You have been sealed. You have been approved by God. If I can give you some 
I want you to pay attention to this message that I'm talking about. The seal. Having this seal. For example, when you purchase a nice vehicle, most people, let me just say most people, most people will want to buy something new or certified. That if you go looking for a car, you want to buy something that's new or certified. Before you purchase a home, you want it to be checked, examined, and approved by the inspector. Anybody that's ever bought a house, you will not buy it, you will not throw your name on the dotted line until somebody comes out and certifies that this house will not fall apart. When you go to the gas station, or maybe to the gas pump, there is a seal on that pump. And that seal being on that pump shows that it is certified or government approved. When you graduate from college or from the university and you receive your degree or certificate, it shows that you are certified to work in that particular profession. But nobody is going to allow you to work or do anything if you don't have that seal called the degree. So what Paul is pointing out to us is that if you belong to God, then you have been sealed by Him. You are approved by Him. And how do we know you are sealed? Because we, we will have no way or we will not walk in a way that is not pleasing to God. We will stay away or depart from all iniquity or sin. When you have a seal by God, when he approves you, then understand you will, you will not get involved with evilness that is in this world. You won't give your members, your faculties, or your limbs. You will give yourself over to wickedness and lawlessness. When you are sealed by God, we will walk according to God's ways or His commandments. Scripture says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You cannot be a son of God unless you have had that seal or approval by God. So most people will claim that they are a child of God. Most people will claim that I'm saved. They say I'm sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, and I got Jesus on my side, and I'm running for my life. But all of those things that I listed, many of them do not have. They've never been baptized according to the scriptures in the name of Jesus. They only did it in the titles, or they lift up their hands and confess the sinner's prayer. That means you're not certified. You're not approved. You don't have the seal, and you do not belong to God. This is why scripture shows us that if we want to be sealed in the kingdom of God, Jesus said in John chapter 3 verses 3, how you doing sir? So glad to see you. In John chapter 3 verses 3, I get excited when I see those that I've invited that I wanted to come and they come on through here in Jesus name. So y'all pray for my sister right there. We want God to bring her all the way in in Jesus name. John chapter 3 verses 3. It lets me know that if you want to be sealed, Jesus said in the book of John chapter 3 verses 3 that we must be born again. In John chapter 3 verses 5, if you continue to read, I want you to read. What did he say in verses 5? Read it, sir. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He cannot what? Enter into the kingdom of God. Read that verse one more time, sir. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. If you have not done this, 
Come on, come on. Then you do not have the approval yes. or the seal of yes. God to be in his kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. If you have not been baptized in water and received the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Ghost on the inside, you do not have that seal or approval. When it comes to the water, he's speaking to us regarding baptism. I want to say this because you have many preachers. Notice what I just said. Preachers. Pastors, so-called. Bishops. Prophets. Evangelists. That all claim they are man and woman of God. But they will tell you that you are not, you do not have to be baptized today to be saved. But understand this. Jesus came, who that who, which means that that's the one that we follow. He was baptized. And he was baptized by John the Baptist. And why? Who is Jesus? Who is without sin? Why did he get baptized? He didn't get baptized to wash away the sin. He got baptized to be an example of what we ought to do. So how are you that's a preacher or a pastor saying that they don't need to be baptized to be saved? He said be born of the water and of the spirit. Why are you leaving out the water, preacher? Jesus. Which is why Jesus tells us. In Mark chapter 16, verses 16. I want you to read it because this is a part of the Great Commission. Let me say that one more time. When he reads this, Mark 16 and 16, I want you to get your Bible, get your electronic device, and I want you to turn to this preacher. If you are a preacher that's told somebody that they don't got to be baptized, you totally dis dis uh, put a or disapprove what God said. You have put it to the side like the scripture don't mean anything. But listen to what Jesus said in the Great Commission. We can go from Matthew 28 and we can also go in Mark and we can also go in Luke. But I want you to read it because all of them are the synoptic gospels and you got to get all of them to have the complete package. And the apostles they follow what Jesus said from the Great Commission, when you go to the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up and told them to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall what? They shall lay hands on the sick. They will speak in new tongues. Understand this is all what Jesus said. How can you say nobody needs to be baptized? So I want you to read, because I want everybody to hear this. Don't ever let any preacher tell you, you do not need to be baptized. All you got to do is confess the Lord as your personal Savior. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Because the one that wrote that in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 9, is Paul. And Paul got baptized. You can see it in Acts chapter 22, verse 16. So any preacher in the plain area, when they preach this or say that to you, come out of that place because you're going to die and they're sending you to the lake of fire. Read, sir, Mark 16 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized, say it again. He that believeth and is baptized, say it again. He that believeth and is baptized, Lord, shall be saved. Wait a minute right there. What does that mean? So if you tell me I'm saved and you confess the Lord as your personal Savior or you believe in your heart, what am I going to tell you? What the scripture says. You can believe, but you've got to be baptized. He that believeth and is that is a conjunction. That is something that is connected to the belief. That you got to believe first and believe Jesus according to what is written. Believe on him to what, what that is written. Believe what the apostle said about Jesus of what we ought to do. Read it one more time. Mark 16 and 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
But he that believeth not shall be damned. Shall be what? Shall be damned. Shall be what? Shall be damned. That means if you don't believe Jesus and according to what is written, you won't get baptized anyway. You'll rebuttal and say that my pastor is still preaching the truth. He just don't preach that. But I'm telling you, your pastor is not the pastor that God has called. You need to get up out of that place or you will see yourself in the lake of fire. Come out of these places. Come out of these false churches. I know you're tired of them. How many in this parking lot are tired of these false preachers? How many are tired of these false preachers? And after this pandemic is over, many of them will invite you back to their churches. Some of them are trying to do what we're doing, which is a drive-up service, but they don't have the Holy Ghost and neither truth. So I'm saying to you, don't drive up in that parking lot. Come on straight up to Bell Glade and pull up right here so that you can hear the true word of God. Amen. And eventually we'll be back indoors and there's enough room for you. Come on. Amen. And come on and dine with us and let's eat at the table that we can eat the true word of God. Amen. Somebody amen. shout out amen to them. Amen. And so that is Jesus talking about the water and baptism. And Apostle Paul, the one you quote from, Apostle Paul points out to us about the Holy Ghost. Understand, if you don't have God's Spirit on the inside, you do not belong to Him. Read Romans chapter 8 verse 9. But ye are not in the flesh, thank you Jesus, but in the Spirit. Yes, Lord. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Dwell in where? Dwell in you. Dwell in where? Dwell in you. Go ahead, sir. Now if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Say that one more time. If what? Now if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, he is not of his. So many people are claiming. I'm a child of God. Many people are claiming I'm a saint of God. But if you ain't got God's spirit on the inside of you, which is the Holy Ghost, and I'm not talking about no fictitious trinity or triune God. Understand the Bible never gives us any type of description of a trinity. Understand that every person that wrote anything in his Bible was a Jew. Understand the only person that was not a Jew was the person Luke, which was the doctor or the physician in the New Testament. He wrote Luke and he wrote the book of Acts. But every other writer was a Jew. And there's not one Jew that would ever tell you, or there's not one scripture from the Old Testament, which is where our shadow or our examples come from. And not one of them ever believed in a God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, or a triune God. There is no such thing they only believe one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. It's only one, only one, not three persons into one. That's schizophrenic. But one God who can manifest himself in any way he wants to. He can be the burning bush when talking to Moses. He can be the cloud by day and the fire by night. He can come in the flesh as a man. He then rocked and followed them in the wilderness. So I come to tell you, it's still one God that can do anything exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. What kind of God do you serve? I got a God that can do anything but him. I got a God that I serve that can do anything. He is the creator. He is the word. He is the father. And he's the son of redemption. But it's one God that is able to manifest and do all of this by himself. He created the heavens. He said, I created the heavens and the earth. He said, I did this alone. Alone. One God by himself. Read that one more time. Romans 8 and 9. Go ahead, sir. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. And God tells us also from the beginning, not only water and spirit, but once you get this, he tells us, be ye holy, for I am holy. And we are to walk and live in truth. 
So this is why I tell you to those that are in the parking lot, to all of our guests, visitors, and friends, that once you come into truth, don't go back to your church or that church. Once you come into truth, and once you start in getting the word of God according to what is written, don't be loyal to that man or that woman. Be loyal to God. Amen. So this is why we tell you, when you come to this drive-up service, you know that you've heard the truth. And you know for sure that many of your churches are closed and you have had to come here to get the word of God. So I come to tell you, stay here because there's so much more that God wants to give you. So much truth that he wants to give you. Don't go back to that false church, but just say, you know what? You ain't even got to say it. But if you want to send a text or a letter, just say, listen, I found a new place now that's going to give me the true word of God. They was open during the pandemic and they're still open right now. They were open doing all of the right and they're still open right now. We have closed our doors, but we're still preaching the truth. So I say to you, anybody that loves truth, blow your heart in this place. I'm sorry, sir. So we walk and live in truth. We are to live a repentant life before God. That means turn away from all sin. You say, Pastor, but can I get away with this? I say to you again, all sin. All of these are a must to get into the kingdom of God. All of these are a must to be sealed by God. So let me give you these three points so we can learn tonight from this subject. Number one, God's seal guarantees us that he will give us eternal life if we continue in him. God's seal guarantees, it guarantees us that he will give us eternal life if we continue in him. Notice Paul speaking to us from Ephesians chapter 1 verse 12 to 14. Read it real loud, sir, and I want you to make it simple. Read it, sir. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. So that means he was talking to the Jews first, but understand, he's going to talk to the Gentiles, and that's us today. Go ahead, verse 13, sir. And now you Gentiles have yes. also heard the truth. Of what, what do we hear? The truth. Go ahead, sir. The good news or the gospel. Yes, that sir. God saves you. Yes. And when you believe in Christ, he identifies you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit. By giving you what? The Holy Spirit. By giving you what? The Holy Spirit. Go ahead, sir. Who he promised long ago. Read, sir. The Spirit is God's guarantee. It's what God's guarantee. It's what God's guarantee. Read it, sir. That he will give us the inheritance he promised us and that he has purposed us to be his own people. Go ahead, sir. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. But let me add this to this. You are only guaranteed if you continue in God's truth. Amen. This is not no fictitious Calvinism. Calvinism says, once saved, always saved. We don't believe in that no way. Calvinism tries to say predestinate, which means that no matter what you do, you're going to be in heaven if that's what you are predestined to be. The devil is alive. God talks about repentance. And repentance means to turn away or turn back to him. I cannot turn back to him if I've never been there with him. So when he was talking to Israel, that means they had turned away. And he wants them to turn back. And if they have not turned back, they will be lost. So don't let nobody tell you that you're predestinated. As long as you walk in the truth and stay in truth, then you are guaranteed to be in glory with the Lord Jesus. And so I come to tell you, every saint of God, you better stay on this course and you better stay focused because Jesus is soon to come and he's going to come in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. You better stay focused. You better stay focused. You better stay focused if you want to have everlasting
everlasting life. He will guarantee you everlasting life. He will guarantee you his promise of eternal life. But if you don't stay in the truth, because he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you don't stay in the truth, you do not have a guarantee. And so I come to tell you, it's just like a warrant. It's just like a warranty. If you do anything to break that warranty, understand it's null and void. So you gotta stay walking in truth. You gotta stay living in truth. You gotta stay giving God the glory and walk the right and be holy. Come on, clap your hands up to God. So God has given the children of God a seal. All of those who have obeyed that form of doctrine. But preachers and people like to say, let's get off the doctrine. I cannot get off the doctrine. Because the doctrine is what saved me. The doctrine is what's keeping me saved. The doctrine is what's keeping me in mind. So you cannot tell me to let's get off a doctrine. Because we have obeyed that form of doctrine. Look at Romans chapter 6 verse 17. Read it, sir. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from your heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Say that one more time so they can get it. What? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. I was the servant of sin, but go ahead. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. It was delivered to us. It was the gospel. And the question is... What is the gospel or the gospel of Jesus Christ? What is the gospel? What did God want us to know? What does Jesus want us to know? What did Jesus come to do? The gospel is, and people try to say things like this, my pastor preaches the gospel. What do you mean when you say they preach the gospel? They preach Jesus. What do you mean I mean? Understand there's more to that. When you preach the gospel, you're preaching the death and the burial and the resurrection. When you're preaching the gospel, your preacher should be preaching the death, the burial, and the resurrection. Which is why every child of God in the New Testament has to believe and obey that Jesus Christ, understand we got to believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. If you don't believe that, then you cannot be saved. You got to first believe it and understand after that you got to apply that to your own life you say well pastor how do I apply the death the burial and the resurrection to my life because that is what God wants us to do how do I do that preacher how do I do that man of God let me tell you you first have to repent repent means you are dying to your own self repent means you're turning away from the old choker you used to be. The old lady that you used to be. You are dying to yourself. You no longer that person. I have repented and turned back to God. That old man is dead. All things are passed away and all things have become new. That is the death. But when we talk about the burial, understand the burial is baptism. We are buried with Christ. We are buried with Christ in baptism. That's what it means. Here, I'm trying to teach you. But I get a little excited so I can slow down. Understand, repent means to die. And to baptize means to burial. You're buried in that watery grave. But after you get buried in that grave, then you got to talk about the resurrection. And what is the resurrection? It's rising up to walk in the newness of life. How do I do that? Who has to give me the seal, which is the Holy Ghost? I understand that now. Well, now I see the Holy Ghost. Now I'm able to cry out, Abba Father. I'm able to cry out, Abba Father. That's my daddy now. Come on, come on, come on. That is the gospel. That's the gospel. That ain't just something I made up. That's Bible. Come on, this is Bible. This is this is, this is like Bible. This is this is one on one. This is something for the kid. And you're struggling with this. 
saved. Now that means there's so much that you're confused by. The death, the burial, and the resurrection. I died. I was baptized. And I rose to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, which I'm walking in the newness of life. I have a new life. This is why the church Thank is called Jesus. New Life. Hey. We don't get involved when we walk in the newness of life. We don't get involved with the affairs or the wickedness and the unjust things of this world. Why? Because I'm seated. Why? Because that's my thought. Why? Because I love him. Why? Because I obey him. Why? Because I trust him. So everything you see going in the world, say to God, listen, we are not to get involved with the things that are going on in this world. Why? Because we have been sealed with by our Lord and Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is like an example of those that are enlisted in an army or an army service. When you get enlisted to go to the service and you're shipped out, understand, as a soldier, when you go to your assignment, you don't get involved with the affairs of the, what's going on around you. You don't get involved with civil affairs, whatever's happening around you. As saints of God, when you get that seal, when you come into the kingdom, and when you start working as a servant of the God, you are a soldier in his army. You are not to get yourself entangled with the cares or the affairs of this world. I will to tell you that from the scriptures. Look at what Paul taught Timothy. Read it, sir. Second Timothy, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. Read it. Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you in Christ Jesus. Yes. You have heard me teach things that have been confirmed by many reliable witnesses. Yes, we have. Now teach these truths to other trustworthy people. That's what I'm trying to do. Who will be able to pass them on to others. Yes. Endure suffering along with me. Yes. As a good soldier. As a what? As a good soldier. As a what? As a good soldier. As a what? As a good soldier. Of soldier. Christ Jesus. Go ahead. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life. Say that one more time. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life. Say that one more time. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life. These soldiers don't go out rioting. The soldiers don't have hatred against another person. A soldier doesn't get caught up in the things that's going on in this world. Because that's not my assignment. My assignment is the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. Read it one more time, sir. Soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life. Yes, sir. But then they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. And who is the officer that enlisted them? It is Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. God still guarantees us that He will give us eternal life if we continue in Him. I say that anybody that's rioting and trying to get things for their own personal, for their own personal wants, there's a place for you. Which leads me to the second point. The children of Satan also have a seal. If you don't want God's seal, then you can get a seal with Satan. My second point is the children of Satan also have a seal. Which means if you don't belong to God, then you belong to the devil. And many will say out of their mouth, I don't belong to him. I don't belong to the devil. I'm not a friend of the devil. I don't even like the devil. The devil ain't controlling me. I do what I want to do because I want to do it. But I come to tell you, that is a lie. You are the one, you are belong to the one who you serve. But listen to the scriptures. 
And let's find out for sure if you're getting that seal of Satan. Look at Jesus' words on how he breaks this down to us when he's talking to the Pharisees. Because those Pharisees were people that were religious or tried to act like they were saved. But I want you to hear what Jesus is saying. In John chapter 8, verse 41 to 45. Read it real loud, sir. Go ahead in verse 41. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, If what? God were your father, Go ahead. Ye would love me. Uh -huh. For I proceeded forth from and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. If you love Jesus, you will do what he said to do. But understand, go ahead and finish reading, sir, verse 43. Why do ye not understand my speech? Because you don't love God. Go ahead, Even sir. because you cannot hear my word. You cannot hear God's words. That's why you don't want to hear truth. That's why you won't come to church. That's why you think what you're involved in is good. But unless you come into truth and hear what God has to say from the scriptures, then understand you cannot not please God. You cannot please God. You cannot please God. And neither do you understand what God is saying. So what does that make you? That makes you a daughter or a son to the devil. Read verse 44, sir. Go ahead. Ye are of your father the devil. What? Ye are of your father the devil. Go ahead, sir. And the lust of your father ye will do. What does he do? He was a murderer from the beginning. Yes, he And abode not in the truth. Abode not where? Then I understand you are there's no truth inside of you. When you don't like truth and like the word of God, then I understand there's no truth in you. I understand when you tell me that I ain't gotta be baptized in Jesus' name, I know that there's no truth in you. When you say I ain't got to receive the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I know that there's no truth in you. When you tell me I ain't got to be at church all the time, because church is within me, I know you ain't got no truth in you. When you say I can go to any church, I ain't gotta go to that church. I can go to any church. I know there's no truth in you. Because none of these churches around here are preaching the truth. If you hear what I'm saying. When you say I got a boyfriend and we live together, but God knows our relationship. I know there's no truth in you. When you walking around fornicating, thinking that God is okay with that, while you saw your royal oath, then I know there's no truth in you. When you commit adultery, or you hitting on your wife with domestic violence, I know there's no truth in you. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. When you dip it in that and you trying to get a lottery ticket, I know there's no truth in you. When you gambling, trying to roll the dice, I know there's no truth in you. Hear what I'm trying to tell you. If you are a preacher and you sleeping with people in the church, I know there's no truth in you. If you don't tell people that they need to repent and turn to God and stop living in Sin. I know there's no truth in you. If you don't preach the apostles' doctrine, I know there's no truth in you. You are a liar. You are a liar. to mimic God. 
And so like God wants to give his children a seal, mm -hmm. that devil wants to give his children a seal. And Satan wants to make sure he puts his seal on you because you belong to him. Which is why everyone that belongs to him or that love this world, hear what I just said, you love this world. You love this world. That's why you like going to hear the preacher talk about blessings. Because you want the blessings here on earth. Don't get me wrong. Ain't nothing wrong with blessings. But I'd rather have Jesus over all of that. I'd rather be saved over all of that. I don't need a new house. I don't need a new car. If he don't give it to me, then that's it. But as long as I got Jesus and I'm saved, that's what I want. And you might say, well, Pastor, I gotta get married. You might not ever get Married, but you better make sure you got that seal and make sure that you say you may not ever get a six for your job. I pray that you do, but if you don't, you better make sure you got that seal. You might say, Well, I haven't retired yet because I want to lay by the beach. The devil is alive. You better make sure that you got that seal in the name of Jesus because the devil wants to give those that belong to him a seal. You say, What you're talking about? Well, look at Apostle John. So John warns us regarding the seal that the devil is about to give out. Look at Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 and 17. Because this is where we are right now. We're about to go there. But God got to get the church, those that have a seal, out of here before this happens. Before this happens, hear what I'm saying. Listen to me that's watching live. I want you to hear this. That we're moving close to this point. That God has to get the church. This is why you see the things happening in the world. After this whole thing right here, something else is going to happen. At first thing we had the pandemic, and then now we got a little race war or rioting going on. We got rebellion going on. We got hatred going on. But understand from the scriptures, there's a flood coming in, and it's going to continue. It's going to get worse and worse. So after this, I come to tell you, surprise, something else is coming. Surprise, something else is coming. But before we get to the end, God got to get the church, the ones that have the seal, out of this place. How many ready to go? How many know that you're going? How many ready to go? I got to go. I can't be stopped down here. I got to get out of here. So listen to the seal. Listen to the seal that the devil is going to give. He's going to require everybody. Everybody got to get this seal. If you left down here, read it, sir, in verse 16. He required everyone small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. To give it a mark where? On the right hand or on the forehead. To give it a mark where? On the right hand or on the forehead. Let's read that one more time. Verse 16. He what that devil what? He required everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. Read, sir, verse 17. And no one could buy or sell without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Read, sir. Wisdom is needed here. Yes, it yes. is. The one with understanding saw the meaning of this number of the beast. Go ahead, sir. For it is the number of a man. The number of a what? A man. Go ahead, sir. His number is 666. His number is what? 666. What does his seal say? 666. What's his number? I don't want that seal. I got the seal of the Holy Ghost. That's what I have. That's what I got. I don't want the seal of this man. I don't want the seal of this Antichrist. But everybody that's left here, when the church is gone, you're going to get that seal. You're going to get that seal whether you like it or not. Or you will die with torment and pain and agony. Understand what I'm telling you. How many are grateful that God gave you this? So I come to tell you tonight that the children of Satan also have a seal. My last point, and we're going home. Which one are you sealed with? My last point is which one are you sealed with? Which line are you in to be sealed with? Well, it's easy to tell because it is the one you are obeying or serving right now. The one that you obey 
and the one that you serve, that is the one or the line you're in for your seal. Paul points it out to us in Romans 16 and 16. Read verse chapter, chapter 6, verse 16, sir. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Say that one more time. Know ye not what? Know ye not that whom ye, to, that whom ye yield your servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Read that one more time because I don't want to say that I didn't hear you. Go ahead and read it one more time. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are his to whom ye obey. Read that one more time, sir. Go ahead and read it. Take your time so they can hear what the scripture is saying correctly. Read it one more time. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey. His servants ye are to whom ye obey. Finish it, sir. Whether I sit unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So whoever you serve, whoever you obey, that's the seal you're going to get. And I'm so grateful that God sealed me and gave me his approval. I thank and praise God for all that he has done. Because I was a sinner and sin crippled me. But I thank God for his plan of salvation. And I have no doubt that I belong to the Most High God. I have no doubt that my soul is saved. I have no doubt that if I stay walking with the Lord and humble with the Lord and live a repentful and a holy life, that my soul will be saved. Because I have his seed. I repented of my sins and I was baptized in Jesus' name and was filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and I've been living for God since then. I have that seed. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Which brings out our scripture text in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. It says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from every wickedness or iniquity. Get away from the things of this world. We are in this world, but not of it. We're just passing through. We're sojourning through. Keep your mind on Jesus. Stay focused, saints. Stay focused, people of God. We're going to get a couple of more services. God is going to allow a little bit more time just to get a little bit more into the kingdom. But as soon as it's done, we're going to get out of here. You better hold on if you've got the seal. So tonight, for those that want this seal, you must obey Jesus Christ and obey what he gave to his apostles. He chose them and he sent them out into the world. This is how we have the message today. To the Jews, to the Samaritans, and to the Gentiles. This message was given to the Jews, to the Samaritans, and to the Gentiles. That means to everybody. And all mankind in this dispensation or from the New Testament have to obey what was taught by the apostles. And so Peter, the one that Jesus gave the keys to, he gave the message that if you want to receive this seal, come on and hear the word of God. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 to 39. Read it, sir. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And I believe that God is calling you today. You've heard this message from the older to the younger. From the mother to the elder, to the teens, to the young people, which seal do you have? Which line are you in? Having this seal, it is guaranteed that we will have eternal love. I say to you, come. 
and make sure you have the seal that Jesus Christ wants to give. God bless you. We love you. I pray that you listen and you heard. I pray that you understood. We have that seal. Come on and be a part of the church of the living God. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.